In this video we would like to help you monitor long-term changes in landscapes or seasonal changes in landscapes using fixed camera points and camera pictures, digital pictures from different cameras. And to do that we'll give you a little tutorial on using PT GUI, which is a photo stitching program to um, essentially standardize shots and cameras and camera formats into one standardized picture and then you'll be able to take those standardized pictures and put them into a video showing change over time and you'll also be able to measure within the pictures differences in say um, rates of erosion or amount of snowfall or tree growth over long periods of time and these kinds of things can then be used in a network either within a park or within a region as part of a citizen group or a watershed society to track environmental changes both in uh, rural landscapes also in urban landscapes. In this experiment, we used two different kinds of cameras, two different formats. One had a telephoto lens on it, the other did not. Both were simple point-and-shoot cameras. Uh, in your work, you can use any number of different kinds of cameras, and we've done experiments with smartphones, and those are totally adequate for doing this kind of work. So what you do need to have in this kind of work is a fixed camera point. In other words, the camera has to have the same angle, the same height, and roughly the same uh, direction on each shot. Small variations are fine, but by having a fixed point, you get rid of a lot of the problems of uh, putting together cameras from different formats. So you don't need to have a post, although you could. You could make a camera point or you can simply attach a bracket to a wall, to a tree, you can use a bridge abutment, you can use a feature on a building that's a ledge or a lamp post. Any particular spot that can be used over and over is fine. You just simply have to be consistent in how you um, hold the camera up against it. So you want something that is at right angles and that the camera can rest up against that forces it to be in the same direction and view each time. This is extremely easy to do. Any number of people can participate, young or old, they just have to have a digital camera. Okay, what follows is a tutorial on how to use PT GUI to make these corrections to uh, different photographs in different formats. We're opening PT GUI now. We're going up, PT GUI is opening. We're going to load images. These are four images we've chosen using two different camera types. You can see the dimensions are quite different, but the scene is the same, taken from the same location. We open up the advanced um, dialog and now we're going to set control points in those four pictures. We've um, set uh, picture number one, uh, which has the largest dimensions, um, as the master picture. And it's now called picture zero, actually. And what we're doing is we're choosing a set of points that pair the master picture to each of the three additional pictures. And what we're looking for are features in the uh, photographs that match, that you can be, find readily, um, and um, we are marking them. And what the program is going to do is take those paired points across the two pictures and rectify them together. It's going to overlap them and overlay them using a um, algorithm that uh, changes the size and shape based on these uh, match points. So setting the match points is uh, important in um, uh, in this uh, process 
and so you want to be careful that you're fairly accurate. And you can see the magnification window that pops up here. That's going to be very helpful in being as accurate as possible in setting the points. There'll be a little dialog box later that flashes on the screen that allows you to look at your average um, error rate in um, setting control points. Now we're doing the very last one and we're continuing with the same uh, process here at the top of the lamppost fixing a point, fixing another point on the top of the lamppost in the other picture and we're going to a nice corner in the parking lot that has a clear white uh, line. In more natural scenes you'd be looking for tree limbs and um, rock outcrops and um, uh, other features and in some cases you could actually even put in um, features into a um, natural scene that um, uh, doesn't have good control points or at least you don't think they do. Um, something like a, a post or a stake or a colored marker would be fine although that might destroy the view. Okay we're finished we're going to lens settings and we're hitting restore defaults even though everything is already zero but in other times there might be numbers there you want to clear all that out and now we're going to go down and we're going to click image one two and three limit leaving importantly image zero off now we're going back to um, project assistant getting rid of the automatic um, entry of lens data uh, may not be important but I think it's um, useful to do um, we're going to optimizer now clicking the advanced button we're getting rid of the check marks that allow optimization of a set of um, lens features. So we're turning them off, we're leaving FOV on and um, field of view and lens distortion on. So we clicked, we ran optimization, it said it wasn't bad, you could have seen the points. Now we're going to the um, picture editor, we're fitting the panorama, it's considering this to be a panorama onto the screen, it was very small before, it's just a sizing routine. We went to the individual pictures and you can see they now overlay on top of each other. Um, with the different sizes now rectified to one another. Now what we want to do is create a set of new pictures from these um, overlapped or corrected pictures that are all the same size and shape. So what we're doing is cropping the edges down to the smallest picture. There's another cropping tool in that uh, program that you can use too. We've gone back to create panorama. Um, we're doing individual pictures and we're now going to change the uh, name of the output files to, in this case, test individual layers only, I should have said, rather than individual pictures. We're creating the panorama. It's creating four new pictures from the, they call it warping, but it's really corrected or rectified um, shots that are now all synchronized together, so they're in the size and shape, uh, the size and shape are exactly the same. So uh, and we'll finish that. Now we'll go down and we'll take a look at the, um, the resulting pictures. So we're clicking on uh, picture zero. This was the original master picture. And we're going to go through the others. And you'll see that the size and shape, even though the scene is quite different in terms of seasonality, the, the lamppost and the trees are all in the same place. And that's exactly what we want to do because now we can take those pictures or a much larger string, PT GUI can do hundreds of pictures and dump them to a um, time-lapse um, feature within almost any video program. And then you have a set of corrected pictures. Thank you very much. Here are a small set of considerations to take this to the next level. So first of all, almost any video program can take a series of pictures and make them into a video, so you're not limited there. If you want um, and want to take this to the next step, all this um, material here is done within stitching programs. It seems that a new software package that is optimized to um, create and standardize pictures may already exist or it could exist if someone like you created it, uh, at least among different cameras. It will do it.